Hello everyone, this is CJ Wiley with more Adventures on the Road. On one of my previous videos, I uh, put out one of my secrets, I guess you'd call it, to uh, developing my killer instinct. When I was like in my uh, later teenage years, I was in a position where I had to win and uh, I started biting the inside of my mouth to taste the blood because I just didn't think I had enough killer instinct. And it just made sense to me, you know, uh, animal taste blood, it makes them into a killer, so why wouldn't it a human? <laughs> so, I don't recommend that. I've got a few uh, messages that, uh, you know, asking me, you know, and I don't want to influence any younger players to start biting the insides of their mouth to give them killer instinct. So what I want to do is give you better advice as far as the mental side of pool. You see, um, I've always had a fascination for the mind and, uh, uh, you know, how it works and how powerful it is. I have a master's and practitioner's degree in neurolinguistic programming. I've got a degree under uh, uh, Richard Bandler, who taught Erikssonian hypnosis, um, not to hypnotize people, just like with martial arts. I didn't learn that to beat people up, and I didn't learn hypnosis to be able to hypnotize people. I just wanted to be able to protect myself and others that I care about because I've been physically attacked, mentally attacked, and even spiritually attacked in this world. And, and you know what I mean? The higher level you get, let me just put it this way, it's not going to stop. So you have to prepare yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually, especially in this world that's not exactly getting any easier to uh, decipher. <laughs> Especially if you turn the TV on and uh, if you want to learn what brainwashing and hypnosis is all about, just watch the TV a little while and uh, you may not even realize it. But uh, like I said, if somebody doesn't think they can be brainwashed or hypnotized, uh, they probably already are. So, uh, but the mental side, especially like let's take hypnosis, for example. Milton Erickson, Dr. Milton Erickson, his wife came up with a self-hypnosis technique that's considered, uh, you know, if not the best, one of the best there is, because it quickly puts you into a trance. And all you do is you, you know, I usually, you know, sitting in my chair, getting ready to play a match, I'll just see things, uh, and then I'll hear three, well, I'll see three things, I'll hear three things, and I'll feel three things. Like I might see the colors of the balls, the color of my opponent's shirt, the color of uh, the ceiling or the wall, then three things that I hear, maybe the click of the balls, the, the music that's playing or some voices, and then three things I feel, like the seat under me, I'll feel the cue in my hand, I, I feel, uh, you know, my leg against the uh, other side of the chair. It, it doesn't matter. Just three things that come to mind because it's the process. So you go three things, then you do two things, then you do one thing. And by the time you're done with the one thing, you will be in a lower uh, state of mind. That means your, your brain waves lower. Scientifically speaking, they go from beta down into alpha. It's kind of like when you're driving and you start thinking, deep thoughts and you forget you've been driving for 15 or 20 minutes, but yet you still have really good reflexes and you're driving safely like I am now. And uh, I always get somebody saying, why don't you wear a seatbelt? My response is because I'm fun to be around. <laughs> Plus I'm an expert driver. If you want to wear a seatbelt, wear one, but uh, I don't want to hear about it because uh, there are times that I do now, if it's, if it's raining or snowing and, and I feel like there's a legitimate danger, uh, I will do that for myself and others. But for the most part, uh, I've driven uh, a lot. If somebody's driven as much as me, then I might listen to them a little bit. But I've been averaging two hours a day in a car for decades. <laughs> and that's what I do when I'm in the car is I study. I, I'm always listening to audio books or some YouTube videos. I've got a connection to some of the greatest researchers uh, in the world in different countries. That's where I get my news. You know, they say uh, it's better uh, to be uh, uninformed than misinformed. Because, like I said, I uh, I am not going to be hypnotized by any people that I don't know. <laughs> That's not smart. 
Anyway, back to this. So the self-help gnosis technique will help you. Another thing that I've covered in writing is how to develop confidence. Now, there's one surefire way to develop confidence, and many of us have to do it kind of naturally, you know, which is fine. I did too. But if you know how to do it, then you can address it a little more aggressively and build up your confidence even faster. Because one component to developing real confidence is using courage. So if you have a situation that you're not confident with, just think of a way to address that particular thing and show courage, even if you don't do it well. The courage of it is what develops the confidence. And like I said, it's a sure thing. Like if you're scared of approaching attractive women, just start doing it. Just go up to the most beautiful women you see and just say, hey, I've always been scared to approach beautiful women, so here I am. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> if you say it, they're gonna laugh. They're gonna think it's cute. They're going to admire your courage. And I swear <laughs> you can find this out for yourself. Uh, do it 20 times and all of a sudden you'll be able to walk up to anybody you want, say whatever you want, and uh, probably change your life for the better. You know, salesmen know that. Public speaking, I've done a lot of public speaking in front of a lot of people, and uh, I did it on a consistent basis. I never was really uh, scared to do it, you know, but... Uh, but you do get more polished and being able to read the audience as you're talking and be able to change tonality and, uh, you know, the linguistic part of your delivery uh, by uh, calibrating your audience, that, that takes skill, takes practice. So in pool, like I said, a lot of this stuff was done uh, naturally. And when I look back, even when I was like, nine or 10 years old, I remember there were certain players that I uh, was kind of intimidated of. And, uh, but I got up and played them anyway. I mean, I just put myself in positions where I didn't really have a choice. And, and that's what you can do just playing little weekly tournaments or something in your hometown. That's what I'd recommend. You don't have to gamble to be a great player. A lot of people will tell you that. I do think something needs to be on the line. So if you're going to play for money, play for a dollar, play for five dollars. Don't ever play for enough that will change your life if you lose. That's just uncomfortable, and it's really not going to help you like some people try to say it will. Take it from me. Uh, I was voted one of the best gamblers of the 20th century with Earl Strickland and Efren Reyes, so I do have some credentials in that area. So um, what I did when I was 15 is I started uh, borrowing my friend's car, uh, John Emery, can drive into Columbia, Missouri. And that's when I started gambling with a lot of older players and uh, had a great deal of success. But again, I was, I was intimidated and I was scared when I first started doing it. And I just made myself. And you know what? After a few times, uh, the nervousness went away. My confidence started to grow. And uh, that went to when I was 21, I uh, played in a tournament with 756 players called the World Series of Tavern Pool in, uh, at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. And I remember before the finals, it was packed with people. I had to go to the bathroom and, and urinate like five or six times. I was like, where is all this water coming from? But it was just I was so nervous. My, my mind and body was freaking out. And that's just what happened. But you know what? I got up in the finals of that tournament and played pretty much perfect and uh, won that World Series of uh, Tavern Pool. And then went back. I went back undercover. You know, the money wasn't quite as good as it was gambling. So then I went and, uh, again, I pursued the best players in all of the different cities and states and uh, went into their home pool rooms and played them on their home table and figured out a way to beat them. And, uh, you know, that's where my confidence grew. I knew I could go in any city and beat anybody playing the games that I was proficient at. And, uh, you know, the rotation pool games in particular was my uh, forte. Even though I could play other games well, I just didn't. And my tournament uh, record shows that. The World Series of Tavern Pool was eight ball, uh, 
nine ball I've played uh, most of my professional career. Straight pool, I got second in a major tournament, and Efren Reyes had to double dip me because I beat him in the winner's bracket, and uh, he came back and double dipped me in the finals. But nothing to be embarrassed about. Efren's a pretty good player. Huh. No, he just got lucky. Anyway, um, my first professional tournament was in Toronto, Canada, and I played Efren Reyes, speak of him, uh, and beat him 11-6 to six first time I played him. Then I played Earl Strickland and, uh, and won that match. But if you think I wasn't nervous playing against those guys and uh, intimidated, then I don't know what to tell you because straight from the horse's mouth, I was. And after I beat those guys, my level of confidence went up automatically, just like yours will too. Just find situations you're uncomfortable with and just make yourself do it. And again, you don't have to do it well. Just do it and let it flow. And then the next time you do it, it'll be easier. Next time you'll do it, it'll be easier. And before long, you will have a level of confidence that you've always wanted, and it will change your life for the better. I will assure you of that. Anyway, this is C.J. Wiley. If you enjoyed this, uh, I'll get into more details. But those three things right there that I mentioned are, are a good place to start, especially if you're a young player wanting to be a champion uh, at pool or golf or tennis or anything else. Uh, Inner Tennis, Zen and the Art of Archery are great books to read uh, for the mental side because you can really golf, tennis, and, uh, and pool all kind of go together. I play all those games at a pretty high level, and uh, I see a lot of similarities, especially after working with Hank Haney, who was Tiger Woods' coach, uh, for a year and a half in golf. Uh, we traded. I taught him how to play pool. He taught me the golf swing, and uh, it was a pretty good deal. Anyway, join me at www.masteringpocketbillers.com if you want to know more about my techniques and systems and fundamentals that I learned on the road and playing the greatest players in the world like Efren Reyes, Earl Strickland, Buddy Hall, Mike Siegel, the list goes on and on, uh, or cjwiley.com uh, if that's easier to remember. Anyway, till next time, my friends, I will talk with you then.